All right. Um, today's topic is using Microsoft Word, actually, and Microsoft Office to do uh, open coding. And, uh, and this is, uh, I'm going to be showing you just a little bit about using gerund endings to, to do your open coding with. Now, this process could be used uh, completely identical if you were doing um, coding from a list type. And, and we haven't really talked about that in class yet, but you, you'll, you'll kind of get the gist of it, we hope. All right, so <clears throat> let me get this out of the way. Uh, first of all, I have a, a transcript here, real live transcript from a real live research project done by real live me. And it's got some words in it. And uh, <clears throat> one of the things that we have to do before we can uh, uh, do this process is to set up our data uh, correctly, or do or format our text uh, correctly. And the way to, to do that, and this process will work in um, in either uh, Microsoft Word or or Open Office uh, uh, Writer. Uh, is to, uh, after you get your transcript done, go through and read through your data, and every time you see a uh, kind of a, a break in, 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 in thinking, put a new paragraph in. So I'm going down, going down, going down, reading, 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 and I get down to this really long chapter. So, uh, I mean, chapter, paragraph. And so I want to I want to read through it and, and make sure that it's uh, not more than one thought. Um, so this 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 person is talking about their history of having this ceremony or this uh, healing way handed down father to son. Been doing that ever since he was a little boy, uh, helping his elders, help help helping helping his father. Um, <clears throat> uh, so uh, so this is. Pretty much one thought, so I don't have to change that. So this here's another long one. Uh, history of it: um, father to son, injured or threat to his life. Um, uh, <coughs> okay, so maybe this is a new thought. Give us way to pray, but to, to use for warriors that were injured in battle. So I'm going to put a little <coughs> um, uh, paragraph break right there. Just by hitting the return button, uh, you know, blah 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 blah. They didn't have hospitals. Pointed out. Um, so he's kind of changing from the past to talking about uh, the students there at Haskell. And so I'm gonna put a new paragraph in there. See, it's a really long paragraph. So White Lodge is sacred. Uh, so uh, there's a new kind of uh, uh, kind of discussion going on. Uh, uh, a <clears throat> uh, 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 lot of sub discussions going on here. So uh, it may take a while to read through this and kind of break out the different thoughts. And you kind of want to get it, get it down to where uh, each chunk of, of data, whether it be one sentence or even one word uh, or a whole paragraph, is kind of conveying one, one idea. Uh, and, and you'll notice that sometimes people talk kind of circular. And so you may have to um, to break paragraphs up uh, into different parts. So, so I've done that, and um, uh, so it's it's ready to be imported. Uh, <clears throat> so, how do we import this into a table so that we can uh, uh, code it? And and uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, Microsoft Word has a nice little little tool in it called. Um, uh, Import text to convert text to table, which is not highlighted because I don't have any text selected. So I come down here, select all my text, hit Control A, which will select all the text in my document, all 14 pages of, of text. Then I come back up here to my table and I click Convert Text to Table and click OK. <coughs> Excuse me. That gives me a little um, dialog box popped up. Uh, tells me the number of columns that I have. Do I want more? Mm, no. Uh, number of rows that I've selected. What that's going to tell me is how many paragraphs 
or how many individual thoughts are in that 14 pages. Uh, and if I'd actually gone through and, and separated out this whole uh, document by its, um, its ideas, there would probably be more than that. So you can see how quickly uh, uh, coding uh, can get out of control if you're not systematic about it. Uh, finally, separate text at paragraphs, commas, tabs, or other. I choose paragraphs <clears throat> because it's more natural. Um, one could is to separate the text by uh, some other uh, punctuation. You could use tabs or commas. Now, commas is a part of natural uh, punctuation, so you may not want to do that. So you may you may want to do something obscure like a um, uh, percent sign or a, a ampersand or something like that. And that way you can go through and put ampersands or percent signs in your data wherever the new thought stops. And it'll put each one of those new thoughts into a new, uh, into a new cell. But I'm going to stick with paragraphs. Click OK. And, you know, it's quick as quick as I can even do anything. It's into a table. Now I've got uh, uh, a couple other steps to do, uh, and there's there's a couple ways to do this. Uh, one is to is to just select there and then right click and uh, select there. Okay, I've got this all selected. Let me come up here in my table and insert a column to the left. That sounds fine. And then what, I, and you can go ahead and start your coding right here if you want to. Uh, it could be that Microsoft Word is a little bit better of a format for doing that. Um, <clears throat> but the way that uh, I would recommend doing it is, is put it over into Excel. Um, but let's do it here uh, because we're on um, uh, on a video, and I just want you to be able to see things more clearly. Uh, so I don't need this that big, so I'm going to bring this down to a more manageable size. Now, gerund coding, uh, uh, G-E-R-U-N-D. What it is is a a word that a verb that ends in ing, like running, uh, talking, uh, those sorts of things. Uh, words that get at the action or the motion of, of a process. And the nice thing is about using gerund endings when you're doing open coding is that it will more qu quick, it will, will more quickly push your thinking to look for active process, what's going on in the data, versus more kind of surface description. So, uh, <clears throat> so let me start out here, uh, and this is how I would open code that. Uh, now, one of the one of the tenets of, of a lot of qualitative researchers is that all data is important. So you have to use every bit of data. So. Uh, <clears throat> What I have here is, is me talking and the interviewee talking. Now, um, sometimes you may have to keep those two together, two thoughts together, because somebody might ask something like, well, here's a little microphone uh, for you. Can I pin it on you? So this is me just um, being recorded while I'm putting the, the microphone on the participant. and. Um, uh, and then, you know, the participant responds, they probably get better reception that way. Well, if this, if this thought had uh, been coded in absence of this, we wouldn't know what it, what it would mean. And so, uh, <clears throat> so we might just take and, and cut that and attach it in with that. And so you really need to only worry about that when you've got an interview or interviewee type of set of questions that kind of go together. So, um, uh, and then we got this one. We can just put it up there as well. Um, and so, 
I'll just start coding. Uh, so what am I doing? What what am I doing here? I'm just setting the stage, or I'll just say setting up. So, uh, and uh, <clears throat> could you say a couple of words to see if this works? The interviewee says, "Hello, Bob. Hello, hello, Bob. Can you hear that?" So, uh, I could say testing, but again, I've already used setting up, which is going to be, you know, kind of the same ballpark. I'm just going to put this into setting up. And that'll tell me something later on when I'm doing my coding that that's stuff that I really probably really don't really don't need uh, need. Um, so so uh, here I am describing uh, you know why I'm doing this, why I'm doing this. And uh, again, there's my gerund ending. So sometimes codes can be little short phrases. Uh, so I'm going to skip over that part. Um, uh, <clears throat> so here, here we are talking about the, the purpose of of uh, the sweat lodge. And um, if I decided I wanted to cut up these these into into two different uh, thoughts, I can I can still do that um, by going into my table, insert uh, a row either above or below this. So I'll put a row above and um, and I'm going to just take this part and stick it up there. So I said this is a separate thought. So okay, so the purpose of the sweat lodge has been handed down from from father to son and it kind of goes way, way back even before the white man explored our country and pushed us up into the west. This was a way of communi communicating with the creator. So uh, I, I could call this giving history. Um, why not giving history? <clears throat> um, so that was the way I've been taught to respect ever since I was a little boy. I'd sit out there by the door and help help my father, help my elders and the father. So let me stick another another. Um, um, row in right above that and I'll take this little bit and up down here to father whoops down here to father and I'll stick it up here and I've got a new column which I'm going to call helping Let's see I want to call it helping others helping elders helping my dad I always call it helping for now uh, they would ask me to pick up Pick the door up, and I got to do that. They would ask me to do chores that they had to do around here when they were doing their prayers or doing their doctoring or whatever they had to perform. Um, um, <clears throat> so again, I'm going to separate that out into a new a new row above there, and I'm going to call that. Um, feeling important. One of the things that I kind of just read into that was a sense that, that he was feeling, you know, I'm remembering the interview a little bit, uh, you know, how kind of there's a, you know, the sense of pride, even though, you know, he didn't want to go into it because, you know, he's a pretty uh, religious person. Um, uh, he felt good about being able to help his dad and help help the, the elders in his tribe to do that ceremony. Uh, uh, well, that was using my routine to be there to help them out, but also it was to give me the idea to learn, to respect, and to understand the whole purpose of the sweat lodge. So that's the whole beginning part of it. It's been handed down, father to son, it goes like that. So again, that's a piece of giving history again, which I think we've already used. So <clears throat> now, you saw me just type giving history in. Had I been in Excel, that would have auto-filled. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to go ahead and transfer this over into Excel uh, to show you that and another couple things. So I'm going to select it on the whole table, hit Control C to copy it, and come over to my Excel. And I like to start over here in row B and hit Control V, which is going to paste all that that table into my Excel and then spread it out here so I've got a good looking ooh, well a bigger um, um, 
table that I can read. Let me let me let me make this larger so that we can still read it. So it's not very big yet. So can I make it even bigger? Yeah. So that's big enough to read. Um, okay. Now, now, as I said earlier, uh, this giving history uh, had. Uh, uh, had, had I had I started to type that in, it would have started to autofill. So, so uh, this is what I don't like about working on it in Excel is that uh, it tends to kind of be a little bit more volatile. Uh, um, so I look at that in the Christianity Today, even clear back some of the scriptures I've read that. So. Uh, so he's telling me a little bit about uh, the similarity to uh, other religions, and uh, uh, so uh, I look at it that in the Christianity Today, even clear back some of the scriptures, I've read that. So, so I'm going to say I'm going to call that comparing. Uh, comparing his, his religion to Christianity. Um, uh, the handing down from father to son, through the father, but also through the father and son. Uh, so that makes me more excited. Um, um, like, let me more, read the rest of this. Like my dad, he didn't even know how to read or write. So that I found that out, I said, hey look, it's been that done that way for many years. It probably goes back even further. So what am I going to call that? Wow. Uh, <clears throat> see, probably goes back even further. Hmm. Excuse me while I try to. I was just narrowing that down a little bit so I wouldn't keep going all over the place. Um, <clears throat> from father to son, through the father, but also through the father and son. Uh, so that makes me excited. Like my dad, he didn't know how to read or write, so that when I found out, I said, hey, look, it's been done that way for many, many years. It probably goes back even even further. So that, that's an interesting little statement. Um, uh, um, it's important. Um, it's the importance of of the family relationship. Um, uh, valuing relationship. There's a nice little ing word. So. Uh, and this would go on. So this one here is about praying. So I'll just call it praying uh, to save time. Uh, praying. Um, uh, and of course the phone would stop for, start ringing. Is, is done. So anyway, let, let, let's say that I've gone through and, and did all my open coding. Uh, uh, before I, I go to the next phase, one of the things that I want to do is to um, clean up my, I mean, uh, put my data in a way, in such a way that I can get it back to the condition that it's in right now, with the coding and all the whole transcript in order. So, how do I accomplish that? So, this is what I do. Uh, I start with the letter one, and the number one right there. And then I find my little arrow and I just start. That's supposed to be one, two, three. Let's see. Let me just do it this way one plus A1. And let me put my equal sign in. Ten seconds, I'm, ten minutes of doing qualitative research, and I completely forget how to use Excel. So, and then I can just copy it down, and it'll 
it'll give me a set of numbers. And let me head on down here. And frustration aside what I've done is is copied numbers all the way down to the very end of the data and then even pass it a little ways that won't hurt anything <clears throat> and I'll be using that later well I'll be using it right now so um, let me um, insert a header there I'll call this ID, I'll call this codes, I'll call this text, <clears throat> and then I'll find my little filter up here and I'll turn my filter on. And um, and I can come over here to my codes then and drop down my filter and I got some straight text involved when I was putting my numbers in. So anyway, I've, I've got codes, and right now I don't have that many. Um, uh, but they're the various o open codes that I selected before. So first thing I'm going to do is deselect them all, and then I'll just start with uh, uh, the top one. And it, what that does is it gets rid of all the other codes and lets me see how often something is occurring. So um, let's uh, pick another one, giving history. So I got two giving histories. And so what I'm going to do with giving histories is to go ahead and just select however many cells there are. Pick hit control C, come down here, put a new sheet in, hit control V, and I've got my my uh, two history variables over here, and I'll just call this tab history. And then I can come back over, history is a reserved name. I did not know that. I'll just call it HX then. I'll use the official social work abbreviation for history. So, and I'll come back here, uh, hit my tab, deselect, giving history, and look around. I got helping, praying, setting up, valuing relationship, why I'm doing this. So let me go to setting up. I've got two codes for setting up. Let me do the same thing on them. Control copy, new tab, and that was called setting up. And I'm going to select, uh, deselect all, and and say I decide that uh, 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 valuing relationship and helping are really the same concepts. They're not, but I'm just doing that because they're the the options I have, and. Um, <clears throat> um, um, and then why I'm doing this. I said, well, these are all kind of the same concepts. Um, uh, so, uh, and so I would, I would, I could pick more than one code if I wanted to put that into a new category. I'll copy that. And I'll call that um, uh, uh, helping. I'll just say those were all really about helping, and and then I'd paste that in here. So, so we continue that process on through however many um, um, uh, codes you end up having. I'll just do one more, um, and we'll call it feeling feeling important, and and uh, why I'm doing this. 
is, is one uh, set of um, codes that kind of go together. So you, you, may, you, may, you may notice that I used uh, why I'm doing this before, um, and that's okay. Because uh, I'm putting this into, into um, uh, into a new new kind of code category called why I'm doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that. So you would continue on and, and doing that, and, and kind of what that does is, is it separates out your your uh, your individual pieces of data into a uh, uh, into their parts. And then you can go through and start to um, use your qualitative uh, uh, coding to start to, I mean, qu qualitative reasoning to decide, well, how do all these things relate one to the other? You know, how does helping relate to why I do this? So, so and I often find it, it helps to just have a, a piece of paper and draw diagrams with arrows and all that kind of stuff. To help facilitate my thinking, and so we'll we'll go more into class into into talking about open coding and and about um, uh, uh, inductive reasoning and deductive reasoning, uh, and this whole process of of going from raw data to finished product. So I don't want to make this one too long today, though. <laughs>